Dandelions, dandelions, dandelions. So what do dandelions have to do with meeting your business goals as an architecture firm owner? Hey, Architect Nation, Enix Sears here, founder of the Architect Business Institute and host of the Business of Architecture podcast. And I'm gonna to have to step outside here for this little lesson. Today, earlier, I was sitting in my office. I was sitting right over here in my chair, back here at the controls of the space station. And as I looked out the window, I saw my nine-year-old boy out with a bucket, weeding. <laughs> So this was completely, so he was out of school today. This was completely unprompted. The other kids were in here just playing around on, I don't know, reading stuff and maybe doing a little bit of schoolwork. And here he is, it's actually even sprinkling a little bit. It was raining outside and here he was weeding, right? So let's have a look. And then I'll have a chat about why this relates to achieving your goals as uh, in your business as an architecture firm owner. So here's the bucket. I told him to leave this over here because I thought this was interesting, right? So here's the bucket of weeds uh, that he had collected here. And these are all, these are all, I don't know if you can tell, but these are all dandelions, right? So the thing with dandelions, these dandelions are very pernicious because they have these extremely long roots. These roots can go down anywhere from this one, it's about four inches, six inches, eight inches into the ground. And then they have those seed pods. You know what the seed pods look like? They look like the little balls with all the seeds on them. And the seeds grow everywhere and they get in the grass. And then ultimately what ends up happening, if you don't catch them, is that you have a lawn full of dandelions, right? And no one wants to have a lawn full of dandelions because they grow extremely fast. And what they end up doing is it makes your yard look like it's a, a infested with weeds. Right now, dandelions are pretty, but no one wants to have a bunch of those little tiny stems with the little seed buds on them, right? And so what I told my boys, I said, look, boys, if you go out there, I'll give you $1 for every dandelion that you pull. I will give you $1 for every dandelion that you pull, all right? And that's a good little price, but the key is they have to get the, they have to get the roots because if they don't get these roots on the dandelions, then the dandelions will grow back bigger than ever, okay? And then that just makes my life more difficult because eventually I have to reseed the whole entire lawn because the dandelions have taken over, right? So we basically, we need to get them out before they have time to sprout up those little seed pods and send dandelions all over. Now here's the key. Do you think that it's easy to, for me to get my son to weed in the yard? Absolutely not. As you might be able to see, we have a lot of landscaping around here and frankly, there is a lot of weeding to be done. <laughs> There's, it seems like weeding is a never ending chore around here, right? Keeping stuff, not, you know, landscapers keep it trimmed for me, but they don't do all the weeding for me. So we have to do that, okay? But here's the thing. So my, my boys and my daughters, they, they recently realized that they wanted to purchase some little add-on. So they have, this, they have this, uh, this video game system that they kind of pooled their money together and they bought it. It's called the Nintendo Switch. And on the Nintendo Switch, they like playing this game called Zelda where you're this elf who goes around and you have to save the princess and they really enjoy this game. But the way this game works is that there's expansions and there's additional things you can buy. You can buy upgraded armor and stuff like that. So they have this thing that they wanna buy. It's some sort of upgraded armor. I don't even understand it, right? But what I realized when I saw my boy out in the semi-frigid air weeding when it was raining, I realized that when you have a strong enough motivation, you will do absolutely anything. Okay, when you have a strong enough motivation, you will do absolutely anything. And so when I look at my own business and I look at what I've been able to achieve in my business, what I haven't, more importantly, what I haven't been able to achieve, a lot of times it's because I don't want it badly enough. Now, in the world I'm in right now, in terms of supporting and consulting with architects from around the world, look, I know one of the plagues of being an architect is not having enough time, number one. Also, not winning consistently the kind of projects and clients that you want to have and always being worried about being on this feast or famine cycle, right? Now, of course, there are strategies and there's things we can do to get ourselves out of this feast or famine cycle. There's strategies we can do to absolutely crush and to build your revenue. Right? But unless we have a really compelling reason why we want to do that, unless we have something like the special upgraded armor that we're willing to go out into the cold weather and do something we absolutely hate to pick the dandelions, 
then our motivation isn't going to be strong enough. We're just going to be focused on getting the work done. And another year is going to pass by without getting any closer to those huge dreams and the big goals and the huge potential that we have inside as a person. So what I would ask you to consider in this video is what are those big dreams that you may have given up on? What are those things that you'd like to do, but they're sort of just a nice to do, but they're not a must? You haven't, you haven't really found a compelling reason to actually get these things done. Because here's the key. Having a compelling reason is all about coming up and inventing a compelling reason that motivates you, right? So let me know what you think. Let me know. I'd love to hear any comments. Have you had a time in your life when you did have a compelling reason for something and you moved heaven and earth to get that thing done? For instance, when I applied to architecture school, I just thought if I, don't, if I can't go to Cornell University, then life is going to be over. So I literally moved heaven and earth to try to get into architecture school at Cornell University and I was able to achieve that goal, but just because I was motivated to actually make that happen. Right? So you may have another experience in your life where you've been motivated to do something and you've achieved something that you're really proud of. I'd love to hear about that if you can put that into the chat box. And then what I'd also have you consider is how can you, with your current goals, how can you look at those things and how can you discover a more compelling reason about why you need to succeed in that particular area, whether it's fitness, whether it's health, whether it's relationships, or whether it's business. Let me know, and if you like this video, as always, you can like and subscribe. If you'd like to find out more about the Dream Practice Accelerator, about how you can increase in the three areas of building a dream practice, the finances, the fulfillment, and the freedom, then you can go to businessofarchitecture.com and just look for the tab that says Reviews. All right. You can also go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash Freedom Webinar to attend a special 60-minute training. There should be some links right below this video. As always, Carpe Diem sees today. Today is the day, and I look forward to hearing from you. This is Enoch, over and out.